Welcome back to Beyond 50 Skin. My name is Cindy. So glad to have you here today. We are going to talk everything dermaplaning. It is typically considered an exfoliation procedure. What will dermaplaning do? It will bring you more luminosity. You're going to be exfoliating a lot of dead skin cells off and your face will appear brighter. Your makeup and your sunscreen will go on so smooth and your face will feel like velvet. It will be just like a sensation that you've never had before. And you will probably have better product penetration. Even your moisturizer will probably just, boom, your skin will just soak it right up. You will have possibly a reduction in the visual appearance of your pigmentation because you're removing some of the dead skin cells and it may appear that your pigmentation has gotten lighter, but you're really just exfoliating off loose skin cells on your epidermis. Pigment is really much deeper. Let's consider who maybe shouldn't do dermaplaning. If you have active acne and you ha don't have your acne under control, I highly recommend waiting till everything is calmed down before you attempt any kind of dermaplaning or face shaving. If you have KP, the raised bumps, um, keratosis pilaris, sometimes people get it in their cheek area, I would highly recommend probably double thinking that before you start dermaplaning. Rosacea, I would say, it's kind of maybe a stop and rethink. If you have highly sensitive skin, this is going to irritate your skin. If you use Retin-A on a regular basis, if you use deep exfoliation on a regular basis, chemical exfoliations, you will either number one, wanna take a break before you do this, think twice. Maybe you're getting enough exfoliation. Let's talk about people who are fearful of dermaplaning but would really like to do it and may really benefit from it. Okay, so fears. People are afraid that the hair will go back darker. I, in my experience, have not seen that, either from um, doing waxing for people or doing some tweezing for people when I was in the clinic. I have not seen that, but people do report that the hair has grown back darker. You will have hair that grows back blunt and that may feel like it's thicker like you will have as it grows in stubble right on the sides of your face and a lot of people choose to do shaving or dermaplaning every day to reduce the sensation of that stubble is it safe if you're using the correct procedures and you're following the correct protocol if you have any of the contraindications or your heavy exfoliator you know, you do heavy exfoliation anyway, you're going to, you could have redness, irritation, some micro tears. I mean, we are disturbing the um, microbiome of our face and we have to really consider that. So if I haven't fully talked to you about dermaplaning yet, let's talk about how to do it safely and talk about a protocol so that you can have the best outcome. 50% of a dermaplaning session is preparation and the other 50% is technique. So make sure you have all your supplies gathered, the kids aren't running around under your feet, the dog isn't racing around, and your partner knows that you need a few moments to yourself. So honestly, I taped this for you guys three weeks ago and it went into the editing, editing ether. So I am retaping this, I had to wait for my hair to grow out, but it's definitely proof in the pudding that my hair grew back the same way that it was before. The Bella's hair is still soft. It's uh, the same color, so I had no changes at all in my hair growth after my dermaplaning session a few weeks ago. But I'm retaping it now for you. I'm going to go through the whole protocol. You want to gather all your supplies. I have already cleansed with my CeraVe SA cleanser. Now you want to make sure that if you're doing this in an evening routine and you're doing a double cleanse, that you don't have an oil cleanser that you're using. You want to make sure that you're maybe using a micellar one Water for your first cleanse and then coming in with either an SA cleanser or a glycolic cleanser it tends to degrease the skin and the reason we're degreasing the skin is that we don't have catch on our skin and get nicks when we're dermaplaning and it also helps exfoliate a little bit loosen up those keratin bonds between those dead skin cells and does a little bit of exfoliating next up then your dermaplaning tool of choice. I'm going to go through several that I have here and tell you which one that I prefer. And you also want to pick up a hydrating step, a high molecular weight hyaluronic acid is always nice. You also can add in a mask, an enzyme mask after you exfoliate, but you want to make sure everything that you're using is fragrance free, really gentle, geared toward hydrating and repairing the skin barrier. And the last step, you're going to want to use a moisturizer. I've chosen the Aveeno Restore and Calm, has some oat in it, really calming. And then of course, the very last step is your SPF. Let's review the various tools that you can use for dermaplaning. It's really important that you make the correct selection. I'm going to go through a few that I've purchased and I'm going to tell you which one I like the best. Now, when I was learning dermaplaning during my classes, we used a scalpel. The reason I don't think an at-home dermaplaning session 
requires a scalpel. Using a scalpel can be really dangerous. It is basically a surgical blade. You can buy them off the internet. I know that they're very easy to buy. They're really not that expensive. What I recommend for a derm planning session at home is getting a blade that has a guard on it. Now you can buy the little tinkles. I don't, or these are, or the Schick or tinkles. Now I don't really like these particular blades because they end up doing a lot of scratching and not a lot of exfoliation. And you kind of get what you pay for when you're buying a blade for derm planning. Sephora also, their particular blade has a nice guard, but it also is a little too, it sort of ends up scratching the skin as opposed to gliding over the skin. So I don't really recommend the Sephora blade either. One that I actually really did end up liking is the Flawless. This blade definitely has a guard, but it scratches a lot less. And it also is really nice because it is backlit. So you can really see what you're doing. You can catch all the baby fine hairs. One that I found that I really like even better is Stacked. This is definitely a pricier option. The guard is um, a little bit less on it, but it still has a guard and you get a better exfoliation with this blade. I've washed my skin, I've degreased my skin. Now the second thing is how I go about handling the blade. So I'm gonna use the stacked blade. I like to start at the forehead and I like to go down in a downward motion. Some people come up, but the risk that you have with a with an upward stroke is that you can get more irritation. You will definitely get a closer exfoliation, but you can get more irritation and you can have more potential for razor burns. So when I'm doing a derma planning session, I always go down. I go down at a 45 degree angle in short feather strokes. And I particularly like to start at the forehead. I don't do between the brow area. I think it um, gives sort of, I like a more natural brow area. So I stay away from my brows. I do over the lip and I also used a little tape because some dress tape to kind of tape up my hairs under under my little hoodie here so that my little wispy hairs I don't actually accidentally shave those off. I'm gonna come start in my forehead and come down in just short feather strokes holding my skin taut and holding the blade at a 45 degree angle on the way down. Pull up over the chin so that you don't have to worry about the chin bone because you can get nicks around the chin bone. So just pull your skin up, kind of coming down at a 45 degree angle. Some people dermaplane every day or every other day. That would be too much exfoliation for my skin. The next step is to just rinse with tepid water and you don't want too hot, you don't want too cold. The whole goal is not to irritate our skin. You want to get some alcohol, clean off your blade, let that dry. At this point, it's all about hydrating and barrier repair. So at this point, you could come in with an enzyme mask, a very gentle, not fragrance-free enzyme mask. The enzyme mask that I have right now has fragrance in it, so I'm not going to be using that today. I'm just going to be coming in with some hydrating serum, serum by Medicaid. It's a high molecular weight hyaluronic acid serum. You want to make sure that you don't get the low molecular weight hyaluronic acid serum for this stage because that'll penetrate too deep in your skin and give too much irritation. Our whole goal is barrier repair and no irritation. So I'm going to put on my Medicaid serum and then I'm going to think about a nice calming and soothing moisturizer. Just remember the next few days are going to be all about barrier repair. Store, I love this for a daytime moisturizer. out during the day and subsequent days you want to make sure you're dedicated to your SPF. Today I'm using uh, Dr. Dennis Gross mineral sunscreen. Definitely use a mineral sunscreen. They're less irritating. So for the next few days I won't be using my tretinoin or any acid products. You've done a deep exfoliation. That's kind of enough for now. The focus for over the next few days is going to be barrier repair and using fragrance-free products. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Comment down below on your dermaplaning experiences. Have you ever tried it? What's your experience? I'd really like to know. I always love what you share in the comments about your experiences during all your skincare routines. And I hope you have a really wonderful day.